guys, it's Marie Spalding here at Living Felt, and today I'm here with Michelle Freeman of Eden and Friends, and she is an international bear artist. Did I say that right? Like an international bear artist. Yes. yes. Teddy bear artist. A teddy bear artist. She is an award-winning artist. Look at some of these beautiful bears that she makes. Now, Michelle, you won awards all over the world. What's like the one that thrills you the most? I would have to say when I first got told that I was nominated for a Toby, which is Teddy Bear of the Year, that was that was probably the biggest moment for me. And you weren't just nominated, but you won. Yes. And the People's Choice. I got the won. People's Choice as well. Yeah. Year, yes. And that's an international award. Yes, it is. Now you've been doing this professionally since 2012. Yes. And one of the things that makes your bears really unique is that you felt the face in these amazing little paw pads. Yes, I discovered felting. I was going through uh, looking for ideas to expand my, my bears, how I made them. You guys did an article on Judy Paul and mm -hmm. Black and Bears. Uh -huh. and I wanted to make bear faces like that. So I discovered needle felting. And then you guys sent me a great sample of MC1 Bat. And now that's the only thing I'll use to do their faces. <laughs> We are so excited, not only that she uses our MC1 bat, but in today's video, Michelle's going to show you exactly how to make these fun and adorable little bear head pins that we're wearing. She's going to show you all the tips and tricks for using the pattern, working with the fiber, which has just been amazing, watching you work with the fabric, and even how to get amazing details on the faces. So keep watching. Now, Michelle, you weren't always a bear artist. No, I'm a retired industrial engineer. When my daughter was born, I wanted to be home for her. I needed something to fill my time. I discovered teddy bears. My first venture was on my daughter's behalf to make a small dog for her. Then I was like, gotta make a bear. And now that's all I do. I full time, I design and make my bears. I make them from my own pattern completely. Mm -hmm. I design the bear, I make the pattern. I sew the bear and then I sculpt their faces out of the wall. Now, can I, I'm gonna pick this one up. This is, this is one of my favorites because the fur is just so luxurious. But how long does it take you, besides conceptualizing the bear, like how long does it take you to make a bear like this? If I'm working on a clock, I would clock at least 26 to 30 hours on a simple bear. If he was wearing um, a more elaborate outfit, mm -hmm. Um, I have put in up to 50 hours on a bear before. For sure, 50 hours. Sorry. Well now, you're going to be working on an even bigger bear this year. Maybe yes. you don't want to tell all the secrets, but like, yeah. this is going to be a big yeah. bear. Big bear. It's going to be the biggest bear that I've made. I'm very fond of the genre called steampunk. Mm -hmm. So I want to make a bear that will be dressed totally in black and white. And she will be in the full Victorian garb, but I will be steampunking it with uh, the accoutrements and the way she's dressed. I'm estimating I'm probably going to be putting 75 hours oh, yeah. into that bear to get the costume and the face just right. And she's going to have a needle felted face too. Absolutely. So maybe you'll share a picture with us. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> my pleasure. Super fun. Well, I want you all to know this is going to be a super fun tutorial. I hope you have time to sit with us. There's a PDF you can download. Michelle is sharing all of the instruction in the PDF, including the free pattern and also her suggestions for the best um, supplies you need to make these bears, which of course includes our MC1 batting, but she'll also clue you in on what fur to buy, even what stuffing if you're not going to use core wool, and it's lots of fun. So I'm about to go home and make my own too. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have fun y'all. The supplies we need to make our needle felted bear head pin is the 12 by 12 Earth Harmony foam pad, a pen tool by Clover, then coarse, medium and fine needles, and glass eyes. There's a great selection here and they do need to be glass because plastic will scratch. Um, I start with the 36 triangle as my coarse felting. It is the first layer that I will put on, will, will be with the coarse felting. And when I start forming the cheeks, I will work with the coarse felting. To start refining my shapes, I will change 
to this medium. This is the 38 star. It is a more medium needle. And then when I want to finish and get a very fine, smooth finish on the, my bear's face, I will finish with the 42 triangle. The next set of supplies that we're going to need is we're going to start with our fabric. Your fabric choice is important in that it needs to be woven so you have quite a tight weave on the back. Mohair fabric is great but you need something that's kind of short length, a short pile. You do not want to go too long because you're working in a small size. You will need a sharpie type marker with a fine point to trace your pattern onto your fabric. I use Copic markers to add coloring detail on the face, needle and thread and scissors to help sew your bear's face together, stuffing, we use Morning Glory brand because it is a coarse stuffing, it is not silky, and that, this is the stuffing tool that will come with the, the Morning Glory when you buy it in the box. This is what I use, it is a cookie cutter, I use that to help me get consistency in shaping the cheeks, and I will put my wool in there and felt. This is called an awl. You can buy them at fabric stores and I will use the awl to poke holes into the fabric to set the eyes. My cutters, my wire cutters, I bought at a hardware store, they will be used to cut the wire of the eye so that they are at the correct length so they don't poke out the back part of your bear. And I put the eyes into place using E6000 glue. The wool that I like to use is the MC1 Bat. These are the colors I use the most when I make my bears. What I really love about the MC1 Bat is the texture. It felts very, very quickly. I get a lovely firm finish and I'm able to get a very smooth finish using the number 42 star needle, a uh, 42 triangle needle. This is the other wool that I do like to use. This is the New Zealand Corridale. When I am putting back a bear's face to look like it is a furred face once again. I call it referring. The long, beautiful strands in the New Zealand Corridale allow me to cut to length and needle felt back into a bear's face so that I have that gorgeous color, the gorgeous look of fur, and I can only do that with the New Zealand Corridale. When I'm working with my bears, I needle felt the faces and the paw pads. Simon has been made using the MC1 bat in linen and then I will put the Copic coloring over but you can see what a beautiful firm and smooth finish I am able to get with the MC1 bat. This gentleman does not have a name yet we select, we being Eden, my daughter and myself, select the name once they're totally costumed and finished. His face was the under layer of his face, which you can see at the top of the eye, is this MC1 bat in latte. Then when I decided to refer his face is where I will use the Coradale and cut it to length. And then I will reinsert those fibers in to give me the look and feel of a fabric face. When I make a bear's head, I do try to limit the length of the fur that I use. It's called the fur pile. But every now and then you'll end up with fur that when it does make up into a head, it's quite charming. What I did for him is, because the fur was so long and I was worried the ears would get lost, he has an ultra suede ear of a slightly different color. The same with this little pink lady. Her ear inside is a slightly different color to help it stand out. His eyes are smaller, so he looks a more of an older, more mature kind of bear. And then we have the larger eyes, and the larger the eyes get, the younger the bear looks. Spacing them further apart also makes the bear look a little younger. This is a mohair. It is very dense. It is my favorite mohair to work with. I'm not always fond of the mohair that shows the backing. Again, color, it does not matter.
This is the Dissolvable Faux Fur. It is a French Faux Fur. It also has a woven back, so it is pretty strong. It doesn't stretch and give shape away. But that allows you to see that you can work with any color that you want as well. When you're making your bare head, the only limitation is your imagination. You really want to pick a fur color that you like. I have made purple bears, I've made blue bears, and here we have a gorgeous little pink lady. You're going to um, follow the link at the bottom of the page and that will allow you to get this pattern. You're going to print your pattern off from that PDF file. When we have the pattern, we are going to cut out the individual pieces. We cut out every single piece. The next thing we want to do is select our fabric. I have used mohair. I use mohair because it is soft and silky. It gives me a good finish, but I like the back. The back is a tightly woven fabric, and it gives me a great um, background to work on with my bears. The fabric I'm using is a short pile. You do not want to use a long pile fur because it can make your bear very hard to work with. The other thing we need to do with our fabric is when we look at it, we can see that the fur goes in a certain direction. On the back of our fabric, we want to mark that direction. We want to mark our direction so we know which way the fur is going. These are the head pieces that we will trace around. This is the head back. And these are the ears. I will use a Sharpie marker with a fine point. I will have my pattern piece down and I will carefully trace around the outside of the entire pattern piece. There are markings on your pattern. For the head, there is a marking in the front and the back. Those markings do need to be transferred onto your fabric. While it might not be obvious now why we need them there, when you come to assemble your bear's head you will understand why these little markings are important. Especially ones where we need to leave open so we can turn the head the right way around once we have finished our sewing. We're now ready to cut out our fabric using a very small pair of scissors. When we're cutting out our fabric, we want to make sure we cut the back of the fabric only. You do not want to cut the fur. If you cut the fur, it will show up on your bear's face. It will make the seam very obvious. So we are very, very carefully, we are sliding our scissors gently along, little bit at a time. We're going to cut on the line and you can see there's no fur left on the table. I'm cutting the backing only. And that's very important. If you're leaving fur behind, that means you're cutting the fur. Small, small steps, small cuts. And we're going to work carefully, carefully on the outside. And then we will have our pieces can see there that we've cut in between. When you have cut all your pieces out, you will have something resembling that. Once we have our pieces cut, the next thing we want to do is pin them together. I use straight pins with a glass head that makes it easy for me to see. I'm holding the head back pieces and I have right sides together. I'm using a straight pin. I am going to pull the fur out of the seam and I am going to pin my pieces together. And I will do the same for the other side. I will use my pin again to pull the fur out of the seam and I can pin the piece together. 
This piece is now ready for sewing. Because of the way I've put my pins, it doesn't matter when I sew because the needle will go over the pin. So this is an easier way to pin your bear so you don't have to pull the pins out while you're sewing. You have the option of machine sewing your bear's head together if you're comfortable with your machine. The seam allowance has already been included in the pattern and it is a very small seam allowance of a quarter of an inch. So I want to sew along there. The other way to do this which might be more comfortable for somebody who does not have a sewing machine or is not comfortable with the machine would be to hand stitch. I have a standard straight needle and I am using upholstery thread. You need to use a strong thread when you sew up the bear's head together. When I thread my needle I do a double strand through, through the needle and I will make a knot, just a straight slip knot on the back. On the head back, this part is open. It is marked open on the pattern because that is where we will turn the bear's head through when we are done sewing. The stitch I'm going to use is back stitch. And I'm going to start on that mark that I have made. And I'm going to make a small stitch. In back stitch, we will go through and check both sides to make sure that your stitches are lining up. And you want to pull your stitches nice and tight. They must be very snug. You want a tight seam to work with because that is going to give you that is going to give you a nice seam that is hidden. When I finish off my back stitch, I will weave the thread through the stitches a few times. And then I am ready. I can now remove that needle and you can see on the inside that I have a seam. The first seams you would like to sew would be those two on the head back. This is left open. You want to sew from the nose all the way down to the chin and you will see there once we have finished working our seam that will be totally hidden and you're going to want to sew your ears the bottom of the ear is left open so we are sewing around the outer edge the next part we're going to sew will be the muzzle and then the head side pieces that we've sewn before. Now that little line that we had in the front is very important because that is the center front of his nose and we want to make sure it lines up with the center front seam here. This is a little more tricky to pin because you are working on a curve and you're going to do what a seamstress would call easing in. So you're going to work carefully to pin. Use as many pins as you feel you need. I prefer to work on one side and when I have that one side down then I will come and pin and sew the other side. To get this done it's very hard to sew a curved piece either by hand carefully or a sewing machine so I do something called basting and it is just a very very simple stitch 
Again, I'm using my upholstery thread and I am just going to loop over. This is called a whip stitch. And I'm going to make sure that my pins don't catch my thread. I want my whip stitch I want my whip stitch to be snug because it's going to hold my fabric in place as I do my final stitching. Now that I'm in the middle, I will do my other side. And as you are working, it's important to tuck the fur away from the seam. And I will now whip stitch that part of the nose all the way around there. I work on several heads at one time, so I'm going to show you in another color. You can see that I have whip stitched all the way along here. And then I have used my sewing machine to sew to here, then I stop, and then I sew the other side. Now my front of my bear's head is completely sewn. This is about the longest pile fur that I will use to make one of these bear's heads, because anything longer makes it very, very hard for the bear to be turned right side out. Once we've got the head pieces, so I've got my back piece sewn, I have my nose sewn, and I have my ears sewn. I'm now going to turn my ears the right side out. It is a fiddly process and I have, I have the stuffing stick that I use and there we go. I now have an ear and that is the right side out. The next step that I'm going to want to do is fully assemble my bear's head. I will take my ears. When you're putting in the ear, if it's easier for you to visualize, hold the ear up on the seam so you can see. Because when you are pinning the pieces together, the ear is tucked inside. I like to sew my ears into the bear's head. I feel it gives me... Um, a stronger ear position. These bears are very attractive to little children and they will tug on an ear. When we marked our pattern we marked little triangles on the inside of the ear. Those triangles are to help me line up with my seam so I know where the seam lies the center of the ear needs to be. The next step would be to take right sides together of the head back and the head front. This bottom seam here will line up with this seam here and I will pin the whole of the head together. This is the one time where I will use my pins in a different direction To, get, to help me get the pieces put together initially. And while I'm working, I'm tucking the fur in and away from the seam. It is a little tricky around the ears because they are quite puffy. Just work slowly carefully make sure you tuck your fur away from the seam yep, and then the ears always make life interesting make sure that the ear is tucked in between the fabric 
you want to make sure that that ear, enough of the ear is sticking out that you can see where the ear is. But you want to make sure that it doesn't pop out too far because when you turn your bear the right way around, you don't want to end up with ears that are at different heights. I will now take these pins and I will turn them so that when I sew I don't have to worry. Sometimes I'll pull them out but I don't have to worry about the machine needle. Now, now what I want to do is sew around the whole outside of the head. If I'm doing this by hand I will definitely use the whip stitch all the way around to help keep it secure but I've used a machine on my one and you can see I have sewn all the way around and you can see here there's his little ears sticking out. The next thing we want to do is turn the bare head the right way around. That opening in the back it is going to be it is going to be very hard to do so go for the ear parts first because they are the thickest part find his ear in this gorgeous silky mohair and I will be pulling on this. This is where it's very important that you've done your back stitch and pulled it tightly because if you haven't this is where your seam could give you a hole or a problem. And there we go. Another ear out and I have a very fluffy bare head. The next stage for doing the bare head is to do the actual stuffing. I like to use Morning Glory. It is not silky. It is more of a rough feel. I like that because it can felt. So my wool when I felt will actually grab onto this. But it also can pack in very, very tight. I like to stuff these bare heads very firmly. And when I start stuffing, I will start and I will push this right in. Here is the nose of the bear. I'm starting to push into the nose first. I will form, form the nose first with the stuffing and then I will work my way backwards. I will keep adding small amounts through the back opening. I like to use my fingers. I believe they're the best stuffing tool ever invented. And I will carefully push into every corner. I want to make sure I stuff by the ears and I want to make sure I stuff at the nose. And using small pieces gives me more control over where my stuffing is going. And I will keep packing in there and I will use my fingers like that to help so when I'm pushing into the nose I don't lose my nose shape. So I will be forcing in like that. Once I've uh, put a stuffing into the head to where I like it, I, as I said, I like it very, very firm. Some people prefer a softer feel. The next thing I will want to do is a close up the opening in the back of the head. Another alternative to stuffing, if you cannot find the Morning Glory brand, is to use core wool. Pack it in very, very tightly. Core wool is an, a superb alternative because it allows also when you are felting for that wool that you're felting outside to go through the fabric and felt to what's on the inside. It gives you a much stronger bond when you're building up your face. Once my face is fully stuffed, I want to thread my needle. And the next thing I'm going to do now is sew up the back of the bear's head. Okay, I'm going to put my needle in at the start, the top of the hole. And the stitch I'm going to do is called a ladder stitch. It's also been called Jim Henson stitch and hidden stitch. It's a very, very simple stitch, but it's, it's quite beautiful when it's done. I'm going to start on one side of my opening and I'm going to go straight over to the other and I'm going to take a small 
stitch then I'm going to come back onto the other side of the opening take another small stitch and I'm going to go backwards and forwards like that until I have gone the full length of the opening this is where the magic happens you can see I have built like letter rungs on our, over the opening when I pull tight the opening disappears and you don't see the stitches they're also very hard to feel if somebody is feeling for your stitch so it is probably the most used stitch in, in teddy, teddy bear artistry and I will just pull my needle back up through make sure it is snug and trim off my thread the next bit because we are making a pin we have to put the pin back on I prefer doing this now because I find it much harder to do later when I've got the whole bare head done I use a standard pin back I bought these at Michael's I like to get the ones with the holes in because I stitch my pin backs into place I don't think gluing would be a good idea because the fur wouldn't like wouldn't hold so I'm going to look for the center of my bear's head and I'm going to place my pin back on the center I'm going to take a stitch and I am stitching through that first hole it's a little bit wobbly until you get your first stitches in place and I'm just going to do a back stitch again I've gone in off to the side of the pin back and I'm coming back through the hole in the pin back and that gives me one stitch and then I will do the same on the other side so I will make a stitch there then I will go down to the center hole and I will repeat the process here I'll take a stitch off to the side come back up through the middle and then do the same on the other side off to the side of the brooch and then back up through the hole and then I'll go down to the last hole and you need to make sure while you're doing this you're keeping your pin back straight otherwise your bare head will not sit straight when you pin him on and exactly the same here I make a stitch on one side make sure my fur doesn't get caught and I'll make a stitch on the other side and then I will weave my thread backwards and forwards a few times underneath just to help secure so it doesn't come undone there is an added layer of protection you can do there is a substance called freight check you can put a little bit over each stitch and that will help strengthen your stitches for longevity uh, these, if the pin is a popular pin and it is worn a lot you don't want the threads to break now that we have a bare head that is fully sewn with the back on we need to start preparing the face to felt these fibers around the nose need to come off I will use the same scissors I used for cutting and I'm going to start at the nose tip and I'm just going to take a few small snips at a time work my way I'm going to start at the nose and I'm going to work towards the eye point and I want to cut as close as I can to remove as much of the fur as I can and I'm concentrating just on the nose bit This allows us to have a neater felt, especially if you want to do any kind of reverse felting, 
because in a reverse felting this fur will be pulled back out and then it looks very incongruous, it looks weird. There we go. And it's a process, take your time and work slowly and carefully. And there we have a muzzle that is trimmed and ready to felt. I'm going to be using my earth foam block. I have three pen tools. I have my pink needles, which are the coarser, my medium needles, and then my fine yellow needles. I'm going to start with my sand MC1 bat. I like to start and finish with the wool that I am going to finish the whole head in because I'm working small. If I was making a larger bear head, I would use core wool first. I'm going to spread my wool out. I like to start at the top. I'm going to hold the wool down and I'm going to start felting very carefully. You are pushing quite hard. There is a lot of resistance because you've stuffed the head so hard. That is fine. I am building up a base layer that will give me the shape of my face and the size of my face. I'm pushing my wool carefully with my fingers and I am pushing my needles all the way through so I am felting to what is inside the head. I am trying to create a reasonably straight line. I will tidy it up later. Another reason to love the MC1 bat is if you have too much it's easy to pull off. Okay, now that I've got the back done I will start working my way to the front. When you work over a seam, work slowly and carefully Remember your rule about the needle straightening, needle straight back out again in the same direction. When you work around a seam it can give an odd sensation and the inclination is to tip your clover pen. Your pen tool, don't do that. And now I'm going to work have my first layer almost built up. Okay. What I like to do at this point is I will take an individual needle I always travel with the case of individual needles. I go to a fine needle at this point and I'm very carefully working along the top edge and I am making sure that my edge is nice and neat. And this is where we start to talk symmetry. There's more, there's a straighter line here and a more bulgy line here. So I want to try and push this in a bit, especially down the bottom of his chin. And this just helps me get a neater shape to work on. Every layer that you put on your bear's face should be felted to the firmness you want your finished piece to be felted at. As I am working around my bear's face, I am looking to create symmetry. And every layer of wool that you put down on your bear's face, that layer must be felted to the firmness that you want the finished felt to be. The next thing I want to do now with my bear's face is I want to start doing the cheeks. I like to use an icing sugar cutter. 
The reason I do that is it gives me symmetry. When it comes to a face of any animal, symmetry is very important. Before I start, I need to grab two pieces of my MC bat and I want them to be the same size. I tend to bunch them up so I can make sure I have equal quantities. This is important because this is going to be the bear's cheeks and they do need to be the same size. I will take my tightly packed MC bat and I use my fingers to push it into my mold. I color code my pens. I know that red is my coarse needles, so it's my number one. And then I will start belting. And I work in the center first. The firmest part of the cheek is the center. And I need that to be very firmly felted. I will start working carefully on the outside. When you work with a mold, the tendency is to slip out. Work slowly, work carefully and concentrate. I want to end up with a shape that is round, but very firm in the middle and not so firm on the outer edge. So I end up with a puffy shape like that. It's very firm here and it's not so firm here, but that allows me to do more sculpting with the wool later. I will take my wool and I will just fluff up the edge a bit. When I line on the bear's face, I want this to be his chops. So I am looking to create that line there. So I'm going to put that there. And again, an individual needle is better at this point. And I am going to start felting that center line. Once I feel I've got that down, I'm going to start felting the top. I want my MC back to be soft and fluffy so I'm blending in to what I have. I will go back to my coarse needle. And again, the direction you're pushing your needle in is the direction you pull it out. When you felt over a seam, go slowly. Now I want to felt from here down to the bottom. I'm going to be creating this line here. And I'm going to work, I work with a single needle. I prefer a fine needle at this point. And I am, watch that you don't lose your fur from your face into your felting area. And I'm just creating that line. So I'm starting to get the formation of a nice puffy cheek. I will now put him aside and I will felt the other cheek. I have made the second cheek exactly the same way that I made the first cheek. Again, I'm going to pull apart just a little bit the top edge because that is going to be the top of the face. I'm going to work with my single fine needle. And once again, I am going to create a line and I am creating I am creating this line I will go back to my coarser needle and I will work the top of that cheek into place and I'll go back to my finer needle make sure there's no fur trapped and now I will work this into place down the side of the bear's head. A 
at this point I want to start making the cheeks look the same. So I am going to work felting this side down and then this side down. And I will keep going backwards and forwards. I want to make sure this line and that line are the same. When I'm working with my bear's face, it's always good to check symmetry in both sides of the bear's face. So what I do to one side of the cheek, I must do to the other side as well. This is something you want to do when you start felting the face. Felt this cheek, then felt that cheek to the same point. Then come back to this cheek and work it further to tighten up, to firm up the felt, then do the same to this side. By alternating backwards and forwards, you will end up with a bear that has a good symmetry in his face. If you do one cheek fully on its own, and then come and do the other cheek fully on its own, you might forget a step or something and felt it less in your process, and you'll end up with cheeks that do not look the same. At this point, I'm still using my rougher needle. And when I'm looking at my bear, I'm looking I'm looking at the top of his features as well as straight on in the front. From the top I can see that this side needs to be worked. I'm working this shape and this shape to make them the same. So what I do to one side, I will do to the other. When you worked with your icing sugar cutter, sometimes you end up with a very firm shape. And as you can see here, I'm sort of getting a bit of a line where I would rather have had it blended. This is where these wonderful needles from Living Felt come into play. This is a reverse needle. And what I do is I use it to loosen up some of the fibers very carefully I'm pulling just along those edges where I had an edge line rather than a smoothly felted face I will take my finishing needle, my very fine needle and I will work at an angle and push those fibers back down and as I do that over and over a few times, it normally takes three times of pulling out fibers and pushing them back carefully that line, that firm line that was there will disappear. You can see already that it's starting to disappear on me. And I'll see this little spot there. Once again, I will loosen the fibers. And the only needle that will do that is a reverse needle. It's good to work with your work upside down. It helps your eye adjust to symmetry a lot easier. If you're really stuck that something's wrong with your teddy bear's face, the best thing to do would be to hold it up in a bathroom mirror. And then the reflection that looks back at you, your eye will pick up what is not symmetrical. And I am starting to get a nice little puffy cheek. One way to know if your bear's face is felted firmly enough is to use the trick that I was taught by Marie Spaulding of Living Felt. When you touch your fingers and you touch your hand here, this is a trick I believe used by people in the butcher trade as well, that that it would be medium well done and that would be well done. The firmness between the sensation of pressing on this position and this position. Somewhere in between there is where you want your bear's face to be in firmness when you're done. This is a brooch, a pin. This is something that you're going to wear. It will be bumped, it will be knocked. You want to make sure that this is very well felted towards the firmness level. Again, that sensation there. Because if you do a soft felt, you could have parts of it being pulled apart as you wear it. If it bumps on, bumps on a scarf, then it will come undone. 
So that firmness is very important. The next step we want to do is put in the eyes. This guy has these eyes already. I'm now going to show you how I got from this to that. The first thing I want to do is decide on the size eye. A larger eye, such as this one, which is a 13mm eye, will give me more of a, a baby cub-like appearance. A smaller eye will give me more of an adult bear appearance. My feeling is that you want the cute look, so the larger eye is better. This is on a wire. When I want to work with this, I will take my wire cutters and I will look at the depth of my bear's head. I don't want to cut it too long, I want to make sure I cut it so that I have a little bit of the stem left but not enough that will come all the way through the teddy bear's head. So I will measure and then I will use my cutters to cut. This will leave me with eyes where the wire has been removed. You can see there the wire has been removed. I'm going to look at my bear's face and again I'm going to use my fingers to feel and I'm going to use my awl. This is a very sharp tool. It is something that will treat it with respect. I can feel I have a seam here and I know I want my eye to be close to that seam. You do not want to go on the seam. If you take your awl and you poke a hole through that seam, you could undo your stitches that you very carefully did on the inside. It will make a, a big hole. So I'm going to move just a smidge inside that. There's the seam line there. I am literally moving over a quarter of an inch and I am just going to poke a hole. I am pushing my awl so that it's facing that way. I like to leave my awl in position so I don't lose my hole and then I use this lovely glue get the lid off <laughs> I like to use the E6000 glue it is really really strong I am going to take my eye and I want to put the glue all along the stem. So I am going to squeeze a bit out. This can be very goopy. So just you just need a very, very small amount. Now I will pull out my awl and I will pop the eye into that hole. Now I want to do the same for the other side. I will feel for my seam. If your sewing has been accurate and you come in a quarter of an inch, again, you're pushing the all. It is a hard push in, you are making a hole. I'm going to get the other eye, put some glue onto that stem. I'm going to pull that out. And then the eye will go into that hole. At this point, I know my eyes are correct. I can see I might still have a little bit of firming up to do on this cheek to bring it into shape. But my bear now has eyes. The next step I'm going to do is to be creating these eyelids for the bear. I'm going to be using my MC1 bat. And I am going to be using my rough needles, which is the 36 gauge triangle or the pink color from Living Felt. You do not need a lot of the wool to make an eyelid. You want to start pretty close to how you want it to be when in thickness. To measure the eyelid, when I break a piece off, I fold it around like that. I know once that is felted that will be the perfect length for an eyelid. The first thing I start by doing is I felt a line 
down the middle. Then on one half, I felt down that side. Then I will fold my wool over from that center line. And I will keep felting the back. I do not want the back to be very firm. Here is a finished eyelid before I put it on. The back is still fluffy, but the front edge has been very well finished. And I will do that by working very slowly and carefully. And I am just working on the one edge. And I will work from the top. And I will work from the front to give me that nice firm edge. Having this firm edge here when you are working This firm edge is what gives you the shape of your eyelid and it's very important that that is firm before you put it in. It's kind of hard to work on around the eye and getting the eyelid in perfectly. If you have this lovely sharp edge, it's much easier. When I look at my bear's face, I lay the eyelid down like that. And I will use my rough needles and I use that to hold the eyelid in place. I will bend the eyelid around the eye and then I like to use my individual needle and again I will work with my fine needle and I'm going to felt along the back. I'm taking all these soft fibers and I am putting them behind the eye. I am felting straight down into the back behind the eye. And because I already have a nice firm edge, I am just working along the back. I'll curve the eyelid in a little bit so that it covers the whole eye and then I will keep working to firm it up and tuck it in behind the eye. I also want this edge here to be very neat, so I will work on the inside of the eyelid and this is why it is so important to have a glass eye. As you work around the eye, you can see the eyelid is firming up beautifully. And I will keep working around the eye until I have two eyelids that look the same. The next step for our bear is a little nose. Again, I'll go to my rough needles, my pink 42s. I am using just a small amount of black Coradale wool. It does not need to be black, it can be brown or pink, it's personal preference. And I'm going to scrunch. I'm going to try and scrunch it up. Unfortunately, I'm going to be working black on black. I'm going to scrunch up as much as I can. And I'm trying to felt it pretty much into a ball. Do not need to tuck all the loose ends in because those can be tucked into the nose as I'm felting. 
the nose is positioned at the top of our little split between his cheeks. I place the nose on the face. I go to a single needle. Again, I prefer a fine needle. And I will start at the lowest point I want the nose to be. I am working to a triangle shape. So as I work, I'm tucking in the wall and I am working in a triangle. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. Once I'm happy with the shape of the side of my nose, I will work on the top. If you look at the bear's face, the nose is not totally flat on top, there's a little arc. So I'm going to try and get that shape by carefully poking. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. Here we go. Our bear has a nose. The next stage for our cute little bear is we want to put some color on his face. My personal preference is to use Copic markers. I use several colors and the first thing I will do is I will start with the lightest color and I want some just behind his nose and then I want to stripe up. And I would like some down the sides of his nose and into the crease. I'm putting the color on quite liberally. The next thing I use is a blender. It is called a colorless blender. And I will use this on the edges. And I'm working from the center of my color out. And you can see how it is dissolving the edges of the ink. And the color will go lighter. With the Copic ink, the color dries lighter than you think it's going to. We work slowly building up layers. But again, this is where MC1 Bat is great. It accepts the colors very beautifully. Now I want to take my darkest color and I want to blend in a little around his eyes, his, and the top of his nose. And then underneath here, I want to help create a shadow. Even though I have needle felt at that face, creating the shadow there, enhancing it, gives your bear more character. The colorless marker I am using, it's like a paintbrush, but you can see already how it is starting to blend the tones in. Working from the inside out. This also gives me the opportunity to have a look and see if there's anything that is not perfect on the face and then I can work at it again with my needle. And I will keep doing that until I have achieved the colors. His shading is a little more subtle. It has been worked in a bit more, but you can see the same pattern. Something else that works really well for coloring wool is chalk. 
um, even makeup. If I want to give my bears rosy cheeks, I will just take a tiny bit and I will dust it onto the cheeks. And that is a great way to get a soft color. If you feel this is too much, you can use your reverse needle to pull on the threads a bit, loosen the chalk, and then use your fine needle again to, to felt, firm, felt that area up. That will help the color go in a bit deeper. But the chalk, because you are, we call it poncing, pouncing it in, it gives you an easy way to get color if you're not comfortable using Copic markers. When I color the bear's face, I've used the same colors on my more fancier bears, my larger bears, but it's the same process. I start with the lighter colors and I work them in, and then I blend them, and then I'll add darker colors and blend. The Copic markers even work onto the faux fur, and that helps me accentuate around his eyes. Also his paws. I will make his paw pads out of the MC1 bat, and once they are on his foot, I use the colors, and again, I use a lighter color, use my blender to blend it, then a darker color, and then I blend that. When you're making a bear like this for yourself for the first time, it's probably a really good idea to make little paw pads, and before you put them on the bear, and you're getting to know how your markers work, practice. Practice on those little paw pads before you attach them to your bear, if you do put them on your bear and you find that you're not happy, what you can do is take some more of the MC1 bat, lay a small piece over, lay a small piece over and felt it into place firmly. Remember we want to keep the same firmness and once that is in place you can try again with your colors. But it's always a good idea to make a little bead or a piece to practice on so you know what the color is like when it dries against that color of the MC1 bat but it also allows you to know what your markers are going to do. The last stage that we would do for our bear is the costuming or the decoration. This is a pretty cute bear head face and if you are happy at this stage you don't need to carry on. But to give your bear your special character there's a lot you can do. I found these little miniature cowboy hats at uh, Hobby Lobby and now I have a little cowboy bear. If I find that's not where I want to go, I have a panda who's definitely going to be a girl. I have some antique ribbon. I'm going to put it over the top of her head and I have a little silk flower or I can put the silk flower underneath on her chin. Another option that I have is you can buy glass pearls and if you stitch them on the bottom of her neck, she now has a pearl necklace. You can use the individual pearls and give a little pearl earring. These, they have holes in them so they would be stitched on using a good quality thread. It can be a standard machine thread, it does not need to be upholstery thread. Make sure that the eye of your needle can go through the hole in the center of the bead. But it's a great way to make that bear very specially yours. Perhaps you have a piece of lace from your mom or grandmom that you would like to use. And just give that bear that last little bit of sparkle. Another, another one we could do is a bow tie. So it's finishing the bear to make it yours is your personality. <laughs> 